here with Eric, the CEO of Pebble. And it's really interesting to be talking to you now after we've seen all of these crowdfunding projects, projects that are going to be up for crowdfunding, because Pebble is one of the most successful Kickstarter projects in the history of Kickstarter. So it's great to have you with us. Um, Happy to be here. Yeah, so before we get into some of the newer announcements from Pebble, I wanted to talk about Pebble's origins. Why did you decide to make a smartwatch? Why did we decide to make a smartwatch? Well, it started five years, more than five years ago now. I, uh, I originally started working on smartwatches. Um, I was on exchange at an industrial design school in Europe, and everyone in the school was constantly like doodling things. Everyone was either doodling you know, cars or chairs or furniture, but I was a terrible drawer. I had just come from uh, the University of Waterloo, and I was at this industrial design school. Everyone else was like infinitely better at drawing. So I wanted to start sketching something. Like so I just had to start sketching because everyone else was doing it. And so I started sketching watches. I started sketching bike accessories. I started sketching kind of like tiny, tiny manageable things. And the reason why I designed the watch was because in Holland, where I was studying, everyone was constantly bike riding. Like every single day, I think something like 90% of Dutch people bicycle every single day. Um, I had a new cell phone. I had like a brand new shiny smartphone. And while a lot of the Dutch people, they knew how to bicycle and text at the exact same time, I just was not born with that, you know, aspect of my DNA. So I could not, I was, I was really scared of dumping my brand new phone into the canal. And so I thought of the watch at first as a bike computer that could show you text messages. And then naturally I realized that there were other use cases to seeing text messages besides while you were cycling. So that's when it kind of migrated from the, uh, from a mount on your bike to the wrist. And that was back in 2008. Um, and the very first time that I kind of like thought of what it would be like to, to make a smartphone, a smartwatch. At the time, um, how many of you guys remember the Fossil uh, MBW series? It was like this really big Sony Ericsson like analog digital watch. They cost $399. And so I had seen, kind of seen this on the market and I was like, I'm not gonna pay $399 bucks for this stupid little watch thing. So I started just like hacking it together with some spare cell phone parts and yeah, just started it together. Very cool. That was 2008. Um, and then obviously, you know, every good overnight success story has four years worth of <laughs> uh, non-success leading up to it. So, you know, before we launched on Kickstarter, we had our first watch, which was called uh, Impulse. It was a watch that worked exclusively with BlackBerry cell phones. Now, we were at the University of Waterloo, which, you know, is home to BlackBerry. So we kind of had a bit of a reality distortion field, I guess, um, slightly. Back in 2009 when we started working on this, the first product didn't work with iPhone at all. Um, and it only worked with a small subset of Android smartphones. So probably contributed to the reason why it wasn't like massively successful. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, but I think it was like the, that, and, and you know, we're talking about Kickstarter, and we're talking about like projects that are about to go on Kickstarter. I think one of the reasons why Pebble was, you know, quite successful right off the bat on Kickstarter was because we had gone through like four years of making watches that people didn't really like jump, jump out of the internet into their computer to try to buy. Because, you know, the first, the first products that we made had issues, like they, the battery only lasted for 24 hours, um, the screen would get washed out, you know, a little bit when you went outside under direct sunlight, and it wasn't waterproof. And so with the Kickstarter campaign, we kind of, we had the benefit of all that prior knowledge, and we were able to apply that to both the design of, the, of Pebble, but also like how we, how we explained it to people, um, because we found that you could have like a really amazing product, but then suck at explaining it, and then it's not really going to go anywhere. Right. It's awesome that you got to work out a lot of kinks ahead of time. Yeah, and get feedback and talk to people. You know, a lot of the people who uh, used Impulse, the, the watch that worked with BlackBerry, um, they ended up buying iPhones or Androids and bought Pebbles, and they still email me on, like, a weekly basis. People, like, are still sharing, like, the same people that were sharing feedback back in 2009 are still sharing feedback about Pebble now, and that's extremely valuable. 
So why the name Pebble? I've always been curious about that. Why do we call it Pebble? Um, it's a tough one. So choosing names for things is incredibly difficult because A, everyone, everyone has kind of like different impressions of what a name is. B, it's really hard to like get a spark of an idea to name something. And C, every, there's, all the names in the world have been used up. Like pretty much everything has been named something or other. So if you're trying to find a, a URL, like a domain, pebble.com was taken. Uh, and a lot of people said, why would you choose a name that you, know, didn't ha that you wouldn't be able to buy the URL for? And I was like, well, do people actually browse like that anymore? I chose Pebble because, well, I think the original time that I thought of the word Pebble was while I was sitting in a hammock on a beach. And the idea for a Pebble came to me, I guess, retroactively thinking why it's a good name. Um, it's small, like it's a small word. It's, uh, you know, a pebble is something that you would put in your pocket and not really feel or not really worry about. Um, smooth. And I think above all, it just, it just sounded right um, after going through hundreds of other names that didn't sound right. I agree, it definitely clicks. It's something about the size of the watch and the simplicity, even though it can do a lot. And let's talk about what it can do because you just announced some pretty big um, expansions, especially for iOS 7. Yeah, uh, we're pretty happy. It's been a long time coming, and the team's extremely happy about having launched this. So up until now, uh, Pebble's a cross-platform device, so it works with both iOS and Android. Um, but up until now, uh, we were only able to support email notifications, SMS, iMessage, and caller ID on iPhone. And um, along with iOS 7, uh, Apple announced something called the Apple Notification Center service, which basically mim uh, mirrors all of the notifications that come to the top bar on your iPhone, and they get retransmitted over Bluetooth LE to any device that, uh, that, um, that pairs or connects by, by a Bluetooth LE. So with Pebble, um, we had been previously only using the Bluetooth Classic radio. So when Apple announced iOS 7, you know, Pebble had a Bluetooth LE radio on board. We had just never activated it. So we went through the whole uh, process of kind of like bringing up the Bluetooth stack to support Bluetooth LE, um, and then kind of dealing with, you know, when there's a, a new API in an operating system, it always takes a little bit of time to make sure that you can understand the documentation and make sure that the documentation reflects reality. So after a couple months of wrangling Bluetooth Low Energy and iOS, we were finally able to announce this, uh, this new API. It's really cool. So every single notification that gets sent to your iPhone can now be forwarded over to the watch. And it really enables a bunch of new use cases that, uh, that have always been lurking in the back of our minds, but weren't, we weren't able to actively get onto the watch. So now, when, say for example, on Google Maps, when you type in a destination, on Google Maps and then put the app into background mode on your iPhone, you'll get these notifications that are like, turn left at the next uh, street and go for you know, half a kilometer or something like that, or your destination is on the right. All of those notifications now get sent to Pebble. So just, with, just by virtue of us adding Bluetooth low energy support, we now get access to this you know, turn by turn navigation system that's built into Google Maps. And the coolest thing is that's just one type of notification. There's like an infinite number of notifications. I was just flying here from San Francisco and I got my TripIt, you know, gate change notification sent to my watch. And that's, that's really cool. I mean, obviously it would, be a, it would be amazing to do like a full integration with TripIt and all the different travel providers, but this just kind of works by default now. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah, so now that you can get so many more notifications, is this going to affect battery life? So we had to do something pretty cool. We, Pebble has both a classic radio and an LE radio, but we noticed that for Bluetooth LE, transfer speeds on things like firmware updates, app updates, and music control uh, was really slow. Bluetooth LE is very well tuned for small, short bursts of notifications and data. So on Pebble, we actually choose which Bluetooth system to use for which communication. So for 
app updates and firmware, we still use the Bluetooth classic radio, but for notifications, we use LE. So we're getting kind of the best of both worlds. For things that you get a lot of, like notifications, we're using this lower power Bluetooth LE subsystem, and then we're switching back to the other system when we need to do a higher bandwidth. So, I mean, to answer your question, no. In our testing, uh, the addition of all these notifications, obviously, if you're getting hundreds and hundreds of notifications, you will have an effect on the battery life, but it generally doesn't change the five to seven day battery life that we're looking at. Very cool. Okay, so Android users, they are using the third party app, Pebble Notifier, to get the same kind of notifications that you can now get with iOS 7. Is the same level of functionality with Google Maps, like you talked about, is that built in? Yeah, that's built in. So, that's a good point. Like, we made some fundamental decisions as we were developing Android and iOS support for Pebble to kind of make the best of either platform. So on, on Android, we exposed an intent API. That means that our app sits in the background, acts as the Bluetooth bridge. So you're running the Pebble app on your Android phone, and other applications can send intent messages to our Android app. Our Android app maintains the Bluetooth connection, so all the third-party apps don't have to deal with pairing. They don't have to deal with, you know, is the Pebble there or not? They can just seamlessly transmit messages to our app, which then forwards it to the Pebble. But that's kind of at the detriment of our own app. So a lot of developers have started building third-party functionality like Pebble Notifier, as well as a bunch of music control apps, um, sports apps, fitness apps that don't talk directly to the watch, but talk to the watch via our app. And a lot of people have, have rightly asked the question, why, why don't we as a company integrate all of these existing features into our own Pebble app? And I think you know, the simplest answer is that we're a small company. There's an infinite number of really cool things that people can do with Pebble. We decided to place most of our effort on building the, the framework or the underlying structure that would allow other people and other developers, other hackers to build apps on top of it. So that's very, that's much easier on the Android platform than on iOS. Uh, so we opened that up right at the beginning on Android, the intent system. On iPhone, we're still catching up. And this announcement that we, that we made this week definitely kind of raises the bar on the iPhone side in terms of what Pebble is doing as a first party to support different apps that people already have on their phone. Um, it's not inconceivable to say on, a, on Android that we'd be implementing some of these things as first party um, uh, features. It's just not as high a priority for us right now. OK, let's move on to the other big piece of this announcement, which is the SDK. This gives developers a ton of new tools to create more dynamic apps. Can you talk about some of the apps we could see with that? Yeah, uh, again. People have been asking for these features right since we launched. And it comes down to priorities. We had a priority at the beginning just to ship. We had 85,000 Kickstarter backers who were quite eager to get their pebbles. And you know, our first job as a company from the time that we launched on Kickstarter to January of this year when we started shipping, 100% of our effort had to be focused on just getting these things manufactured and out onto the wrists of people you know, around the world. Right after we started launching, you know, we focused on getting a base level of the SDK out the door. So we had watch faces, games, and then applications that use two-way notifications. So rudimentary weather apps, uh, some remote control apps. Um, with this announcement this week, I think what we're doing is we're, is we're moving Pebble's SDK from an alpha, alpha beta state to something that developers can actively, de developers both big and small, can actively build compelling apps and compelling experiences around. That's why uh, this week we were pretty proud to announce several partnerships with some, with some larger uh, app developers like Yelp and Foursquare um, and GoPro. The SDK finally enables access to the accelerometer on Pebble. That means that instead of having to build your own hardware, say for example you're a researcher at a university or you have a brilliant idea for a new fitness app or a health tracker app, instead of having to build your own hardware and build your own kind of um, product, you can actually test a lot of these things on Pebble. You can use the accelerometer that's built into every single person's Pebble in the field and, and just start experimenting right away instead of having to go through all the steps of hardware development. 
We give low-level access to the accelerometer uh, for things like gesture, gesture control, um, game, game control. But then we also give a really intelligent accelerometer API that conserves the battery on the watch while giving the developer access to frequent um, accelerometer readings. And these are, that's more uh, well-suited for apps that are doing fitness tracking or health tracking or something like that. Um, the other really cool thing that we announced this week with the SDK was our JavaScript API. This was a problem that we ran into in the middle of the summer. There were a lot of cool apps coming out for Pebble, but generally, um, they would kind of be best suited for iPhone or Android. Right. And think of it this way, like if you're a developer hacking away at a really cool app, you're probably gonna build it for the phone platform that you use on a daily basis. You have one around, you're probably familiar developing for Java or for, um, or for iOS. We, we noticed this problem mainly because I, I'm an Android user uh, day to day, but then there's a lot of iPhone users at the company, and we'd be showing off apps we be saying like, oh, check this out. This is a, an app that lets you s preview the camera right from your Pebble, or there's an app for Android called Pebble Canvas, which lets you create your own widgeting system on your watch. And we basically said, you know, it's, not, it's absolutely not a developer's fault they didn't port their app to a different platform. It's, it's Pebble's fault that we weren't able to provide a common sort of low-level access. So with the JavaScript API that we just announced, developers can instead of writing a third-party app on iOS or Android that pairs to their app on Pebble, they can actually just write JavaScript um, that connects to the internet, grabs data from web APIs, uses OAuth to log into Facebook or Twitter um, or any sort of online web account. But the really cool thing is you write the JavaScript once, it works on both iOS and Android seamlessly, and the users they don't even have to install a separate iOS or Android app. It all works inside the, the first party Pebble app. So it makes things much more streamlined. Um, and we're pretty excited to see where that will go in terms of providing, providing users on both iOS and Android a more seamless Pebble experience. Right, it kind of levels the playing field a little bit. Yeah. So when can we start to expect seeing these new apps utilizing the new SDK? Well, I've, uh, I've seen that in, I think it's been about uh, 72 hours since we launched the SDK, just a couple days, and there's already a ton of different apps. Um, one of the best places to find apps for Pebble right now is the My Pebble Faces website. Um, there's also our forums. I've downloaded a bunch of really cool apps already. Uh, naturally, a lot of like early apps are you know more on the simplistic side. I think we'll see over time more more complex apps come out. Cool. I know you're really focusing on the software side of things right now, but the obvious question to follow is any new hardware on the way? We as a company can, can only kind of focus on a couple things at a time. Uh, and that's by nature of being a small company. We started the year with 11 employees when we started shipping. We're up to 40 now. We've been able to tackle a lot more projects over time. That's why we were able to do this new iOS notification push as well as um, as well as the SDK. I think over time, you'll see Pebble be able to tackle more hardware problems. But for now, we're focused on making the most of the platform that's on over 190,000 wrists around the world. So yeah, I mean, the hardware's there. It has a lot of features that we haven't even activated yet. The magnetometer, there's a sensor inside Pebble that we haven't even turned on. So we still have quite a bit of work cut out for us on the software side. I'm really excited to see some of the new apps. And actually, we're already out of time. Um, thank you so much, Eric, for spending the time talking to us. Happy here. to be here. Great, thank you. Thanks.